When I think of trauma-informed care, I think of resilience and having that ability to bounce back and, um, you know, be better. I feel like we talk about children a lot in reference to resilience. And while that's true, everybody has resilience and has the ability to be resilient. And I have quite a few youth that I worked with as teens and are now married and have families and are working and they're doing amazing things. And for them to tell me, um, you know, I'm where I'm at because you believed in me or you pushed me or, you know, whatever, it feels, it feels really good um, because I didn't have that growing up outside of my, my mom. So to be able to know that I make a difference for people is an amazing feeling. So I work for the county mental health agency in Malheur County, which is way eastern Oregon. So it's as far east as you can get. Um, it's a pretty small area and rural. So we have a lot of people that are dealing with um, a lot of system involvement, whether that's the courts, DHS child welfare, there's not very many people that don't have involvement with the systems. It's a very um, low income area. And there's a lot of people that struggle and have a hard time with transportation, housing, I mean, you name it. Being trauma informed and kind of having that understanding or that, you know, empathy for the other person would just help them feel like you want to help them or you want to make a difference for them, not like they're just there to make your life difficult. It's something that's been needed for a long, long time. And so to know that there are people making that push, it's pretty empowering and just makes me want to make that push where I'm at even more. I just remember a lot of times growing up, um, being with my mom and we're going into like DHS for food stamps or whatever. And I just remember feeling like we were less than or we weren't, you know, a priority and we're in the waiting room forever and you know, not really being told anything. And you see your parent frustrated or upset or activated. And even in school, I remember um, teachers telling me that you know, I wouldn't graduate and based on a lot of statistics. So my ethnicity based on the fact that I came from a low income family and I had a single parent. So it was just very um, almost shameful, you know. Nobody wants to think that they're, you know, re-traumatizing somebody or making things difficult for people. And so to really look at themselves and their practices and what they do and what they may not do is hard. Other agencies or agencies that are wanting to be trauma-informed can just, you know, talk to the people that are there. People might have this idea of what they're doing, but having that service user input or the youth input is kind of what I think focuses you, you know, to just walk alongside them, meet them where they're at, really having people's best interests at heart and remembering that it's not a race um, and that you really want to take the time to do what you need to do to be trauma informed. Because when you take that time and you're really visiting with people, I think that they feel like that's genuine and you really want to know. and. They'll tell you.